this is Peter Wielander, Process Industries Editor for Control Engineering Magazine. And welcome to our next basement video. You'll see a rather elaborate looking apparatus in front of me this morning. And this is actually going to work with a number of concepts that we've already covered in earlier videos. You might recognize, for example, the fact that we have the glass of ice water and we have the multi-tester, uh, which is allowing us to use a thermocouple uh, for a temperature reading. And then we also have here a differential pressure gauge, which is allowing us to measure the difference in pressure uh, between these two impulse lines coming from this vessel in front of us. This is actually a duct. What we have over here on the right is uh, a, a hose from a shop vac, which is coming into a chamber here. And there is a coupling at this point and where this coupling is, there's a disc in there like this, which actually covers the full opening of the pipe and only has a group of holes to let air flow through. So what we're trying to do is create one pressure zone here. Then the air comes through the holes into this section where there is a lower pressure zone, which we're measuring then on the low side of the differential pressure measurement. And then it exhausts out through this opening here. This here, is actually a temperature measurement device. If I can get it out. It's a soldering iron attached to a thermocouple. That's what's providing our temperature measurement. It's a 25 watt soldering iron and it is uh, running at a constant temperature or at least a constant wattage. And then we're reading that temperature with the thermocouple. When we insert it through here, that is now placed right in the gas stream as it comes through the pipe. This simulation explains the concept. If you feed a fixed amount of current into the probe and have a constant gas flow, the tip will achieve an equilibrium temperature. In this example, 300 degrees. But if you keep the current fixed and increase the gas flow, the gas will carry away more heat and the new equilibrium temperature will be lower, say 200 degrees increase the gas flow again and the temperature decreases even more, now down to 100 degrees. From this data you can calculate the mass flow of the gas stream. Okay, the thermocouple has stabilized to just over 17 millivolts, which puts us somewhere in the vicinity of about between 300 and 310 degrees Celsius. Now if you remember from the first basement video on thermocouples, the thermocouple is attached to the end of the soldering iron. We have the two leads coming out here. We form a reference junction with the ice water, and then we take the millivoltage reading with our VOM. Now, in our last episode where we did the liquid flow measurement using differential pressure, we were able to do a simple bucket test to determine what the actual flow rate was. Uh, it really isn't practical for air. and. Uh, I haven't figured out a, an easy way that I can actually do that. So we're going to, that, that's why we have the differential pressure measurement as well. We'll be able to see the difference to verify the reading we get from, uh, from the thermocouple. We won't be able to actually calibrate anything, but at least we'll have two measurements to compare and we'll be able to see if we're moving in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the shop vac on I'm going to put it at a relatively low speed. I've got a speed control on it. And then we'll see what happens uh, to the temperature. And then we can compare it to the differential pressure reading. So let me turn it on, set it on low, and let's see what we got. Once the gas begins to flow with the blower at low speed, the temperature drops quickly, eventually stabilizing at 4.2 millivolts, corresponding to 72 degrees. Our temperature sensor is a Type J thermocouple provided by Moore Industries. When the flow increases, the temperature drops farther, stabilizing at 3.5 millivolts, corresponding to 58 degrees. At maximum flow, 
the temperature drops to 2.7 millivolts or 43 degrees. Insertion type sensors like our example use a probe that is inserted through the pipe wall into the process gas stream. The probe includes a heating element and at least two temperature sensors. One sensor measures the temperature of the gas stream. Another measures the heating element. This example feeds a specific amount of current into the heating element and calculates flow by measuring how much lower the actual temperature is than what it should be for the amount of current. The temperature differences provide the data to calculate mass flow. Most commercial designs are relatively precise and offer accuracy in the plus or minus 2% or less range along with wide turndown ratios. Since the sensor calculates a mass reading, the gas density must be known to convert to a volumetric reading. This technology has some practical application considerations. Remember that these are generalities, so discuss specifics with your supplier. Since the design uses a heating element, it operates continuously, or at least with long on periods, at high power levels, so battery powering isn't a practical option. Given the probe size, insertion designs are best with relatively large pipes and ducts. The nature of the measurement is for a small section of the gas stream. The normal practice is to place the sensing point in the center of the pipe and the final flow calculation is based on normal flow profiles for that pipe size. This means that the probe length has to be adjustable or fixed for a specific pipe size. It also means that turbulence has to be minimal, which calls for flow stabilizers or long sections of straight pipe up and downstream. Some probe designs depend on careful axial or yaw positioning. If the probe is twisted relative to the gas stream, the reading can be affected. For large ducts, or where turbulence is unavoidable, some suppliers offer probes with multiple sensors. These take readings at a range of points across the flow profile and correct for poor gas distribution. Dirty and corrosive gas streams can leave deposits on critical surfaces and interfere with measurements or damage fragile sensing points. Some designs are more tolerant of these than others, so discuss these potential problems with your suppliers. So for Control Engineering, this is Peter Wielander, Process Industries Editor. Thanks for watching. Visit our website to see this and other videos and a whole lot of other online technical information. Go to www.controleng.com. That's controleng.com.